San Francisco's GM, John Lynch, recently spoke to the media regarding Dre Greenlaw's Achilles injury, the biggest news being that Greenlaw most likely starts the year on the physically unable to perform list. This would mean he'd be able to return to practice after 6 weeks. Dre then would be able to have 3 weeks of practice before San Francisco had to decide either to activate him or put him away for the rest of the season. So there's a real possibility at this point that Dre Greenlaw at least missed the first half of the season if not the entire season. So John Lynch looking at this situation as well as losing Oren Burks to the Eagles decided to pick up a few players. So in this video, I wanted to cover one of their more under radar additions, Ezekiel Turner, a special teams ace that could offer solid depth at the linebacker position. And who knows, he could even push for a starting job early on in this year. To examine the player he is, I'll be examining his athletic profile, his career up to this point, and the film he's put out so far to see the player San Francisco is actually getting. Coming in at 6'2", weighing 215 pounds, Turner is on the lighter side for a linebacker, but he definitely makes up for it with how he plays in open space. As pro day for instance, Ezekiel ran his 40 yard dash in 4.65 seconds and an impressive 10 yard split of 1.58 seconds. Turner throughout his career has leveraged his athletic ability to become one of the better special teams players across the entire league. But now entering San Francisco, he has the opportunity to compete for a starting job and learn from one of the best linebackers coaches in the league in Johnny Hollins. But to fully understand who Hollins will be working with, we need to understand who Ezekiel Turner has been up to this point in his career. Born on June 9th, 1996 in Pasadena, Maryland, Turner started his football career at Glen Burnie High School. He played both running back and safety, but across his time at high school, he just really wasn't heavily recruited. While Turner did have some offers from Division II schools, he decided to go the JUCO route and enrolled at Los Angeles Pierce College in efforts of getting an offer from a Division I university. This was honestly a great move for Turner as well. Playing safety for Pierce, he was able to register 35 tackles his first year and an interception. And after just one year going the JUCO route, he received offers from University of Washington, ASU, Indiana University, and Georgia State. Of these options, Ezekiel decided to commit to University of Washington where he played special teams and safety. From 2015 to 2017 with the Huskies, he played in 38 games, including five starts. He also registered 100 tackles, two interceptions, and four passes defended. Alongside being a heat-seeking missile on defense, Turner was also a killer on special teams and was named the Husky special team MVP two of his three years. After his final senior season in 2017, Ezekiel Turner decided to enter the 2018 NFL Draft. And with that, scouts decided to dive deeper into his film and there were strengths as well as weaknesses. For strengths, Turner would show little fear from the safety position and he had a mean hit stick routinely blowing up wide receivers. And despite being a safety, he often would fill run lanes like he was a linebacker. Over the last two years with the Huskies, he also improved in coverage, intercepting two passes and having four passes deflected. But of everything, I would have to say scouts viewed his major strength as a special team ability which actually would carry over into the pros quite nicely. For his weaknesses, Turner didn't test up to safety standards, running his 40-yard dash in only 4.65 seconds, meaning there was actually a question where he would play on the football field. He wasn't necessarily a safety, but he was a little bit too light to be a linebacker. He also only started five games across his course of his career with the Huskies. I do want to throw in the fact though that he was behind Buda Baker, an all-pro safety in his own right. Regardless of these concerns, the Cardinals saw a special teams ace that could potentially convert into a linebacker, so they decided to sign Ezekiel Turner as an undrafted free agent after the 2018 NFL Draft. From 2018 to 2023 with the Cardinals, Turner continued to his special team dominance we saw in college. As a rookie, for instance, he finished third in the league with 16 special teams tackles. This year, he was named to Pro Football Riders' American All-Rookie Team as a special teamer. He also blocked numerous kicks across his career and even had a special teams conversion on fourth down. And while we've been focusing on Turner's special teams ability, I also think across his time with the Cardinals, he's improved as a linebacker. He had to learn this entirely new position but he's even started recently against San Francisco. So now the real question is, what will Ezekiel Turner actually offer San Francisco? 
And can Johnny Hollins work his magic with another DB turned linebacker like he did with Fred Warner? To answer these questions, I'm going to examine Turner's film up to this point, starting out with his special team duties. My favorite part about Turner here is how he makes big plays for his team routinely, whether it be blocking punts or even catching a pass from his punter. A big reason why I believe Turner has been able to be so effective in the NFL in this aspect is his awareness. When you're watching a play like this, Turner is able to recognize where the ball carrier is going, fight off his block, and even use his athleticism to bring him down. When you're watching it from the end zone angle, you get a clear view of how Turner fights off his block and then is there for the cleanup up on this Niners punt coverage. But as much as I like talking about special teams as the next guy, I want to examine his extended time at linebacker versus San Francisco this year to really see what he offers there. Starting out, I really want to focus on how Ezekiel Turner does in his run support. On this play specifically, I think he does a great job of taking a read step and then understanding where the gap is forming before bringing down Christian McCaffrey on this tackle. As we watch this again, I think what really stands out is how Turner has enough awareness to watch the block from George Kittle coming to only sidestep it the last second. Once again later in the game, Turner would have to face one of the best blocking tight ends in George Kittle, but he does enough with his leverage to throw Kittle on the ground and get another tackle on CMC. Now moving forward, I want to focus on how Turner does a great job of setting the edge and squeezing this gap. Once he notices Colton McKivitz squeezing inside, he follows his back end and gets the tackle on Christian McCaffrey. When you watch this play one more time, this is exactly how a coach wants it run. He squeezes the gap, ensures that Christian McCaffrey isn't just going to run right off the tail end of Colton McKivitz, and then once he sees Christian McCaffrey coming at him, he blows up this play. Even on a play like this, I think that Turner does a good job of showing off his vision. He takes his read step, he understands actually where Christian McCaffrey is, and that's why he threw Williams to the side, and he actually stops CMC before getting inside the end zone. But as we all know, there's a lot more to linebacking duties in the modern NFL than just stopping the run. You also have to be adequate in your pass coverage against tight ends, running backs, and even wide receivers. So let's take a look how the former safety did in his coverages against San Francisco's electric front. For one, I think Ezekiel Turner is much better in zone coverage than man-to-man -man coverage. On this play specifically, I think he does a great job of reading Brock Purdy's eyes and understanding the routes developing around him. He jumps George Kittle's route to really take away that option. And once there is a completion to CMC, he does a nice job of helping with the open field tackle. Overall, when I was watching Turner in coverage, I didn't think he ever did a terrible job even when the wide receiver caught on him. In this case though, I would like to see Turner not get the face mask on CMC. Now focusing on his one-on-one -on -one matchup with Christian McCaffrey, I thought Turner did a nice job of not being burned too badly. He still stopped Christian McCaffrey from getting a touchdown, and I don't really know what else he could have done in this scenario. Christian McCaffrey is one of the better route runners across the entire league, He's essentially a slot wide receiver that plays running back. Overall, when I'm looking at the signing of Ezekiel Turner, I think this is a great depth signing, especially when you throw in the loss of Oren Burks. There's also the fact their other signing, Devondre Campbell, has dealt with a lot of injuries recently, so there's a real possibility Turner could see his first real opportunity to start in the NFL. And if this is the case, I do think Johnny Hollins will help him become ready in a similar way he helped Fred Warner transition from a hybrid type role into a linebacker role. But even if Turner remains a special team ace, that's a big win for San Francisco, who needed to replace a guy like Lauren Burks. But ultimately, these are just my thoughts of the signing of Ezekiel Turner, and I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. It would also mean a ton to me if you liked and subscribed, and as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.